Hey everyone, Rob here, and got some more updates on the earthquakes and the eruption that seems like it's probably going to happen here in Iceland in the Reykjanes Peninsula. Now, today has been quite the active day. We've seen quite a number of earthquakes, fairly big. Um, you can see here, here's a quick, quick map. They're saying it's possibly due to magma. I mean, everyone's sort of saying maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, but we've had some, you know, 4.1. We had some just a few minutes ago. We had some earlier in the day. Let's take a look at the map really quick. We can see all of these stars. If we go to the Reykjanes Peninsula, we get a little bit of a zoom in. So many stars. This is over the last 48 hours. These green stars are a magnitude of 3 or greater. And if you look at the chart down here, we can see that it goes up. And we had, you know, these really intense ones uh, Thursday night back down and now we're in Friday and we can see it's clustering together quite a lot of tremors and we are seeing it going upwards towards more intense ones. If we look at the table, we can see magnitude 3 and larger. Uh, it's what 720 just now. We have 3.2, 3.3, you know, 4.1, which happened just around 5 o'clock. And if we go earlier in the day, um, that's another 4.1. I think I saw 4.3 somewhere around here, but there's a whole bunch of them here. 4.6 uh, Thursday at three in the morning uh, and so forth. So there are a lot of earthquakes, 4.7. I mean, it just keeps, uh, just keeps coming, I guess. We have a lot of earthquakes going on, uh, but the one thing that is peculiar, <laughs> peculiar, let's see, um, is if we look here at this map, the position of the recent earthquakes are to the right of this road here. So the Blue Lagoon is over here on the left, and then we're getting the earthquakes which have shifted over to the other side of the road. Now, the reason that this is so interesting to me is, let's take a look at the defenses they have here, which the construction is pending a proposal in the government. now. Catherine Jacob Stoltz, Prime Minister, you know, she is putting it forward through the Parliament, and it has to go through a Parliament process because of the. Uh, it's not a. It's not a dangerous scenario. It's it's sort of an uncertainty, so they have to go through Parliament to pay for all this. But the defenses is this, you know, this this here. This is the road. <laughs> you can see the road is here in the background going across, and this is the Blue Lagoon. Now let's go back to where the earthquakes are happening. It's on the other side of the road. So now if we imagine that they spent billions of Icelandic, so it's millions of dollars US, to build this defense, and then the lava happens, the eruption happens over here and spills in this side. Kind of strange that they're gonna spend so much money to do this unless they're building a big circle, like this is a sort of inverse moat. Uh, but it goes to show you, and if you've been following some of the eruptions previously, they can pop up anywhere. You know, it couldn't be popping up here, pop up across the street. So one thing that was in the in a comment in a previous video of mine was, what happens if they build this? They spend all this money, all this taxpayer money on building this defense system, and then it pops open right here anyway. You know, what, what happens then? Because then it's just money wasted on protecting something that was ultimately going to be destroyed no matter what. Now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be prepared all I'm saying is perhaps don't run and spend all your money and get all of this money from from the, the taxpayers um, to pay for this. You know, I think that if they want to protect this area, especially the Blue Lagoon, um, perhaps these companies, the power plant, and more importantly, the Blue Lagoon should assist in the paying for of these defenses. Otherwise, just build a small one around the power plant. Because if that's what the taxpayers are paying for, do that. Otherwise, I want some discounts on the Blue Lagoon if we're building this and it survives an eruption. You know, I want I want some discounts. Again, looking at where the earthquakes are today versus yesterday versus another day. Uh, they're moving around. The, the a potential eruption could happen anywhere as we're seeing. Now, uh, again, yeah, we're seeing here. Here's a little bit of a where the earthquakes are happening now. There is the Blue Lagoon. And then we look here, the land uplift on the other side of the road, right on top of the Blue Lagoon. I mean, these things could happen anywhere. So it's a it's an important thing to do. One thing that I do want to mention 
is uh, the Icelandic Meteorological Office has requested that rangers or sort of you know people go out on behalf of them to take a look at the situation at Lutlurut, which is a uh, previous area of the eruption. You can see here from an image there's some smoke rising, uh, so they wanted to go investigate where <laughs> this area because there's unusual large amount of smoke rising from the previous lava from this past summer's eruption, uh, and they have no explanation as to what this smoke is so far and they're waiting for an answer from the people who have gone out to check it out um, now a natural hazard expert Salome uh, can't pronounce your name so sorry <laughs> expert at the at the meteorological agency said that um, with an interview with MBS that it's un extremely unlikely that all this smoke is related to volcanic activity uh, but it could be that you know this hot lava which is it's still very hot on on this sort of lava field it's broken apart and and just sort of burning but it, it, you know the earthquakes are happening it could have shifted and broke something and it's still hot underneath but uh, it's all a guess they're sending people out to check it out but as i said uh previously taking a look at some of the earthquakes you know we had 4.1 earlier and these are about five kilometers is what they're saying and then uh we have another one that's 4.2 in size. So it's, uh, as I said, interesting to see how it goes. Now, the last thing is the news has been talking a lot about the fear mongering that's, that's sort of happening. And they're wondering if we should not be, you know, here we are, the line between educating and scaring. And I know I'm sort of playing into this. Um, we did have, we see here, Thorvaldur Thor, Thorosan, um, and he was sort of saying in this article with Visir that the residents of Grindavik should basically not sleep in Grindavik um, at night. They should evacuate the town at night and uh, let them go back during the day. Now, realistically, how can you know how can you house these people? Um, and and there's no answer. I mean, basically, what he's saying is there's a danger, and I believe he was the one that said that's a sixty percent chance of an eruption. And, and he's a little bit more optimistic about eruptions than some of the other people that, that uh, come into the news. But the one thing is, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about, hey, you know, we're overreacting. But if we look at what is happening on the roads, and this is uh, road.is, which is the condition of all the roads in Iceland, um, what the police have done if we look here, so the blue lagoon is this, this blue area here. A lot of people are saying that we're overreacting. Maybe the blue lagoon shouldn't have closed. A lot of people say the blue lagoon should have closed. The police have closed the road that goes to the blue lagoon after it shut down. So there is enough of a risk of an eruption and of danger in this area that they have now closed this for driving. You can see it's driving prohibited. Now the power plant is in this area as well. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I'm I'm hearing as to why they closed it. Number one is they wanted an unobstructed road to be able to bring all of the materials in for the construction of these defenses that that we've been talking about here. But uh, you know, if everyone's overreacting, as uh, part of the news has been saying, then uh, why are they closing roads? You know, it's uh, public safety. If it's going to be dangerous, let's just say it's dangerous and let's just say that it's smart that we close it and we limit the access. Uh, but I don't think that we should have uh, a bunch of people stating that perhaps there's an overreaction, as we can see here, if we translate it, uh, that people are scaring others. I think that it's valid to caution everyone especially if they're closing roads so a bit of a longer video there's a lot of stuff i guess in here from images here where we have smoke rising up to the earthquakes and the shifting of the earthquakes uh and well the continued uh magnitude of some of these things as we said we're seeing an uptick in the density which is the number as well as the amount it's, it's riddled with stars on this map. So, But if you're coming to Iceland, don't worry. Should be safe. If an eruption does occur, they close the airport during the eruption, initially assess it, and then they open the airport usually up 
pretty quick. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching uh, Friday night. Hopefully everyone has a good sleep if you're in Grindavik and uh, we'll see what the weekend brings. So thanks so much.